Mark, is it okay? So, um, welcome everybody. Um, before starting, uh, when I was uh, last year at Drupal uh, Con um, in Dublin, I uh, noticed that by the audience in the room, if it's a uh, few people or a lot of people, we understand that there is a problem on the feature the session is about, a problem or a misunderstanding or too many doubts or um, enough documentation, so something that the people want to know. So I'm happy that I'm not the only one uh, with, um, with uh, doubts about um, configuration in Drupal 8. Um, so today we're going to talk about um, configuration deployment in Drupal 8. Uh, it's an intermediate uh, session, so I will um, I will skip the presentation of what the configuration management is, how you can use it, brush, uh, basic things, so we can we can proceed to the deployment itself. So a bit about me, um, I'm Gabriele, uh, I'm from Italy, um, and most of the people here in the UK they call me Gabi or Gabs, and I'm Gabri uh, everywhere on on Drupal, on on Twitter, and on any other social media platform that I don't use, actually. Um, I've been a lot of, um, for a lot of time, a, a PHP Drupal developer. Uh, for eight years, um, as a um, Drupal. Um, I'm a dad, I'm a folk, a beautiful uh, folk, um, which is three years old now. And I'm a software engineer, I consult on a manifesto. And this is what I like. I always put, yes. It's recording, there's no yes. speakers in here because the room's so small. Yes. <laughs> it's not good, I mean, I have a beautiful voice, but um, <laughs> I always put the uh, last uh, series that um, I like to watch. I've been watching Shameless uh, recently, which I love it, that's why it deserves a uh, um, mention on my uh, presentation. <laughs> so, uh, today, we're going to discuss about configuration management deployment, so this is a bit of a description of what uh, configuration management is. is a uh, is a feature which will give us the possibility to have the configuration in uh, files. Um, it's not because the files itself, it's because now we can have uh, a single uh, source uh, um, of, of uh, true about the configuration of our website. And we can take this, 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 uh, this file, and we can take this um, block of configuration and we can version it on our uh, workflow, on our um, virtual control system, or on, on our uh, file system directory, which you just use um, to download the touch itself from um, the web UI. So, this is a piece of software we are going to discuss about, but this is what we are going to chat. This is so, the presentation is more an exercise. I won't tell you the truth. I want to discuss with you about what my feeling is about what the configuration is, how we can deploy it. So this is how the uh, simple configuration deployment, deployment works. We have um, uh, a source website, and our configuration is in the active state. So our configuration is the, a configuration running on the website. And when we want to migrate, when we want to deploy this configuration from the source website to the destination website, most of the time, see, from staging or dev to production, we export the configuration. We export the configuration and normally the configuration go to the sync uh, storage, which again normally is a directory on your Drupal instance. But um, we, don't, we, we don't have to forget when we think about deployment, when we think about configuration, we don't have to forget there are people using just the web UI. So your exporting could be just to export the target set from the web UI. And then you have this monolithic configuration. It's really important. You have a whole block of configuration in a single um, storage unit, whatever is the directory, or a package. And then you import straight inside the destination website. So from a sync state, we can have an active state. And again, what you do is you push the whole configuration Right, so you are the master of true, and whatever is on the search website will be overridden or, or, or deleted. So, if you have a file, if you are new on Drupal or, or not a new on Drupal, uh, sooner or later you will have this problem. Right, you push the configuration and you see that something doesn't work. So, 
then this question is, when I override existing configuration um, uh, settings on production, when I import to production, yes, you will, you will. You are the master of truth, so whatever you have on your files will be, and is existing on production, will be overwritten. Will I delete new configuration changes on production? So my clients created a web form, which is not on my configuration, my monolithic configuration. Will I delete it? Yes, you will. So any new thing done on production will be deleted normally. Um, so these are the rule, rules on import. So the new configuration will be created. An existing configuration will be overridden. So a configuration coming from here, which exists from here, will be overridden. And the missing configuration, which is in here, but is not on our import uh, block, will be, um, will be deleted. So in a simple deployment, we have a simple website. It's just a two-page website or two-landing page website. It's a simple website. It's fine. It can work. So we always push our configuration like it was a waterfall, no? Pushing water and water and water and we delete all the dirty things so it sits on the pool because we keep pushing. But what if our configuration is not simple? What if we have a big website? Some of configuration is coming from us. Other configuration is coming from the client. How do we deal with it? And most of the times, we is not a Drupal website. It's not a, a website with a simple configuration. So it doesn't look normally like this. It's more or less like this. We have small parts of configuration, right? And we, as a developer, we recognize most of these parts. And I, the exercise that we're going to do today is try to find common patterns so we can react to this pattern. This is how we, we, our configuration will look like. Um, in this presentation, I identified four segments that we are going to check at the moment. But um, on, the, on the, the overview is, on our configuration, is something that is like the base of the website, which is the node, the fields, the user roles, something that is the core of our website. Then we have something like, uh, like on this on the top, the yellow one, which is something that the client is going to create, so a new web form. So, uh, one of my, my clients used um, uh, page manager massively, so they create landing page continuously, like once a week. I don't have these pages, uh, these, uh, these uh, page manager instances of the variants on my dev. So every time that I will push my configuration, I will delete all the client jobs. So we have to take care of new stuff. And then there is a, um, a funny thing, um, which the, I, I call it, I'll show in a second, I call it um, the one-time installation configuration. So Google Analytics is a good example. When we create Google Analytics, we maybe put Google Analytics on our dev environment, right? So we have it on the configuration, and then we push to the configuration to production, but then the client has to be able to uh, change the Google Analytics code, so the configuration setting will change. So if we push again this configuration, we will remove the configuration settings from Google Analytics. So we have something that we suggest a configuration and return to production. Do you have it? Production says, yes, I have it. And then you don't give this configuration. So it's a one-time configuration. And then we have a bad, um, sorry, an environment-specific configuration. On this case, it's on your um, development environment. You use data, you use state proxy, you use web profiler. This configuration is still part of your configuration, but it's uh, environment related, so we have to recognize it. So uh, I go through these four segments that I think they have to um, be uh, recognized. Again, it's an exercise. This is what I, 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 I came up after reading some of the uh, solutions uh, to the problems. The problem segment I identify is, I, I, I will put these um, slides almost immediately on the website, so don't, don't worry about taking screenshots or notes, everything will be there. Um, the primary segment is the bones of our website, so is the configuration the client should not change. Fields, nodes, um, views, block types, so uh, the, 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 the core setting, so it's, it's something that, um, it's what at the moment the configuration management does. So new configuration must be created, existing configuration already, then missing configuration must be deleted. So if you have a new field, the new field has to be created. If you're making an update on a field, the update has to be overridden on production. If you're removing a field because it's needed anymore, it has to be deleted on production. So, and the master is seeing, so the, the, the uh, exported part of the configuration is the master of this, this segment. The next 
segment is the secondary configuration. So uh, this is uh, anything new created by the client. We don't have this configuration on our, on our most of the times, we don't have this configuration on our um, exported block. But it's part of the environment, it's part of the, of the configuration. Even if it's not part of the configuration that you are importing, will be part of the configuration of production, which is probably it's much more important than the configuration that you are shipping, because it's the one that will face the public. So it must be recognized as an important segment of the configuration. So together with the thing that we are going to update, we have to take care of things that we shouldn't delete. The master is, is active. So the master is the active um, state of, of, of production. And it's something that we have to consider. One of the examples is the new block instances, or as I said, the, the page manager instances, or new web forms. Uh, right, so we give the possibility to, to the client to, to create campaigns and web forms, and they shouldn't be deleted, so we have to take care of this segment. The third segment is, is probably is, is a funny one, it's a new one. Um, so as I said, is configuration. The, the client should be able to change, uh, and you just want to give a, an install state or a one-time state. Another good example is the, um, is the site settings. On the site settings, um, we, you, you add the email uh, destination or, or, or the email um, um, source of, of any mail sent by the website. This is on the site settings. We had a client that used to uh, add the account of our intern on the settings. So the account, the email address was changing twice a month, so I, I, I don't know what the next value would be. But uh, uh, I must provide this because this is the core of, of, the, of the website, the site settings. So I must provide this configuration. And I have to say, look, Drupal in production, um, you can install, do, do you have this configuration? And, and maybe when you, when you first set up the website, this configuration is not there. So the configuration will be installed, imported. But next time, you don't have to override this configuration. So if already exists, if new configuration must be created, well, if already exists on production, it shouldn't be touched. Uh, another example here is setting, uh, site settings, uh, is some of the instances, and Google Analytics is the sample that, uh, that I gave before. The third segment on our configuration is, I call it level, but it's not really level, it's anything about an environment, so it could be that it must be part of our configuration. Um, the, the settings and the configuration details about the dev environment, so we want to keep stage, file proxy, web uh, uh, pro profiler, and, and dev. Or it could be that we want a segment on our configuration for the testing environment with specific settings, with specific modules for the stage. So this is, we can or cannot identify um, this segment on our configuration. Um, as I said here, I'm using the conditional because this is really, it doesn't matter <coughs> about the, the production, where com this configuration stays, if it is part of the configuration, or if, for example, we don't have this on our client, this, this, we don't have this segment on our configuration, we use um, automatic <coughs> scripts to enable module or disable module in a specific environment, but maybe this is part of the segment that we should, um, we should talk about and discuss about. So uh, this presentation is full of recap because um, it's maybe a new concept. It's something that I personally want to propose or, or, or we should, and we should discuss about. So what we need, we need a service able to understand to which segment a configuration belongs to. It's important, it's not important, it's new, it's not new, it's, it's a regular production, it's a production. And be able to react. Uh, it's like, it's, it's, it's maybe, the sentence may be too much. Um, so I was wondering if we have solution uh, much more than that deployment. we uh, hoping everything will work. And actually we have solutions. Uh, we have solutions. Uh, these are the main, uh, uh, the current main actors on the configuration, uh, configuration management management in Drupal. But maybe in the future we can have more. Uh, so I will discuss about this in, um, uh, uh, comparing all these tools with these segments. Uh, so, first thing is Rush. Everybody knows Rush. I won't talk about Rush. Rush is out of the box uh, um, um, uh, 
contains the commands to import and export. So how trash this with our primary configuration? This is the configuration that we have to push no matter what. Uh, it does automatically uh, with Drush um, swim and sex. Um, it, 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 it takes care uh, out of the box of the primary configuration. The secondary configuration, which is the configuration that the client can change, uh, you know, the client sorry, can create, so it's new instances, is the configuration that we don't have to delete while we import. And it does it kind of out of the box uh, with a partial uh, switch. Uh, what this does, the way it works is, if you rush uh, from the command line, uh, it pulls first the configuration from production, and then uh, it puts your configuration on top. So it means that the new things coming from production that you don't have on your configuration will be merged on this copying over. So your configuration will be yours plus the new stuff. And it does, it works. The only thing there is deleting what you want to delete. So as soon as you use partial, if you have a field that you want to delete, it won't be deleted because you don't have this field on your um, on your uh, configuration to be imported. You don't have this configuration because you've deleted the field, but it's still on production. So if you use the trash partial, it won't delete it. You have to do it manually. It doesn't work with the um, um, install one time initial configuration, um, which is, I, I'm just a reminder, is the one that we suggest. Production, do you have it? No, I don't. Take it. Next time, production, do, do you have it? Yes, I do. Okay, I won't give it to you. Um, and in specific configuration, it kind of does it, so you can skip modules, so for example you can have some modules uh, on your uh, dev or stage, and when you uh, export, it doesn't export it, so you can kind of create um, uh, environment specific uh, configuration. But first, this is just on exporting, so uh, basically you won't export your environment configuration. And then, uh, uh, on the other side, when you import the configuration, you have to manually enable the module. So, it kind of understand your environment. I mean, you, 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 can, you can tell Drush, Drush, look, uh, you don't know that we are on that, but I'm telling you, skip this module, skip the, this, this configuration. Uh, so, Drush, it kind of it does what we need. Not, not fully, but uh, part of it. Config split, another one. So, config split is a... Um, a really interesting model. What it does is exactly what the name C says. It split your configuration in several. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't know. It, it's folders at the end of the day. I was trying to find a good, a good, a good name to things, but at the end of the day, it's, it's a folder. So you can, instead of having a monolithic configuration, you can have a per environment configuration instead. So you say, okay, on this specific setting um, of config split setting, I don't want this module and this module and this module, so the module itself and the whole configuration belonging to the, mo to the module and will be uh, not exported on that block of configuration. It takes care of the primary? Yes, it does. Um, uh, by default, all the... Uh, Drush by default takes care of the primary, so more or less all the solution they can deal with the overall bones of the website. Uh, plus, uh, configuration split comes with uh, Drush and Drupal console implementation with the OS command, so you can import just those uh, blocks of configuration that you want. It doesn't take care of the secondary, unless you uh, rely on, on Drush, um, but uh, this module is mainly for creating, splitting your configuration, it's not about dealing with the configuration. And of course, it, it doesn't just take care of, of the initial, of, of the secondary as well, uh, because it doesn't have this uh, capability. Um, but it takes care of per environment configuration, because this is, this is uh, what the module has been built for. Then another uh, uh, actor is config read-only, which approach the configuration deployment in a, um, uh, a really uh, a drastic way. It just makes impossible for your client to make changes on the production environment. So every time that the client will try to uh, submit on a form um, a, a, a configuration change, the website will say, no way, this is locked, you can't make any change. Um, so going back to our segments, 
That's configuration of the dolly. If you use this modular uh, normal uh, workflow deployment, does it take care of the primary? Yes, it does. Uh, all everything is covered by by Thrush. Uh, all the configuration um, synchronization web interface. Does it take care of the secondary configuration, which is the configuration that we the client has to be able to create, but um, it shouldn't be destroyed by the input. It does. Configuration read only actually it, it should not allow you the client to make any change. It should say, even if you create a new a new instance, it should say no, you can't do it. But as a uh, um developer, you can create a module that hooks on the um, on the I think it's an event is patched uh, more than uh, a form book. But anyway you can hook to the read only process. Oh, I should say it's a read only event. Yeah, it's an event. You can hook to the process and allow some new configuration. So it's tricky, but you can allow the primary configuration to be pushed, secondary configuration to be kept. But for every module, sorry, I skipped the speed. You have even if it's a web UI or a command line uh, module. So if you can do the same task from the web UI and or from the command line, you can do it. But then. You cannot use the web UI, nor the command line, because it must be a web developer going there, building a module, hooking on the event, and um, sorry, subscribing the event, and allowing some configuration. So when I build these segments, and when I build this presentation, I always um, kept an eye on the developer experience, but on the maybe the, 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 the normal user experience, so the people that they install Drupal, they have Drupal already installed, they don't know anything about code, they don't know anything about Drush, they just want to use the configuration. They want to have maybe the website locally, with one or whatever it is, they want to have the website in production, and they just use the web interface. So why should we keep the good tools only for us developers? Everybody should allow to have primary settings, and a secondary settings not be deleted. Uh, so, read config, it could be a good solution for this too, but it's only for coders. Um, then, the other one is called the ignore, uh, which, is a, is, which is a really interesting one. Um, uh, this make Drupal 8 configuration less, less uh, scary. This is what, um, on Drupal 7 feature, they lock this feature. So, don't revert this feature when I revert the whole, don't re revert this. Uh, particular part of my feature when I revert all of them. So what it does is um, on importing, either from the web UI or from the command line, what it does is um, it ignore the new changes. So um, you can use it, that you, how it works is, is there is a web UI um, uh, settings page where you can uh, exclude, you can ignore specific configuration like um, we create, our client create web forms. We don't want to delete web forms uh, created by the client when we import. So it works with wildcard as well. What we do is um, we take the configuration um, name and we wildcard the configuration. For the web form example, we write web form dot asterisk. So anything belonging to the web form um, configuration, it will be uh, ignored, so it won't be deleted on import, it won't be overwritten on on, um, on import as well. Does it take care of the primary? Yes, everything uh, dealing with uh, the trash, uh, it takes care of the primary. But in this case, it hooks even on the web UI import, so even if you are not a terminal guy, even if you are a Drupal uh, developer, you can still use this module to take care of your primary, of your secondary, and even of the initial configuration. So it deals even with um, the one-time configuration, the one that I suggest you have it or not. It does it out of the box. Uh, it, it's a bit tricky because the way it works is you should ship the configuration, the new configuration, the one that you are suggesting, together with the config ignore setting to ignore the configuration. So the first import, because it doesn't know, config ignore doesn't know that it has to ignore this configuration it will import it. And then you import the configuration ignore setting as well. So next time it won't be imported again. Because you just told the model, say, look, there is a new rule and it's to skip this one. It doesn't take care of the apparent environment dealing of configuration, mainly because config ignore doesn't know anything so far about export. It's just hooking on the um, also subscribing on the on the import state. 
not on the export. So more or less like the feature does. So when we head on Drupal 7 the feature, when you lock, it won't override the feature. But when you export, it will export the whole feature again. The final one is Rush CMI Tools, which is our previous next um, Rush extension, uh, which um, luckily take, uh, takes care of everything. When I thought about this presentation, I thought about these three um, segments of configuration uh, before knowing that Rush CMI Tools had exactly a switch to deal for the initial, so it was a confirmation that there is something going around, there is something that we should talk about, and probably there is some segments that we have to identify. Maybe these three or four are good candidates. So, uh, again, it's a tool, it's an extension of the uh, config, uh, config import and config export of, of Flash. It has um, semi and sexy. Uh, so, it's, um, um, does it take care of the primary? Yes, it does. And there is a uh, um, by default, CME uh, integrate the partial, so by default, Drush CME will be like doing Drush uh, configuration import partial, so it will keep all your configuration, uh, sorry, it will keep all the, um, the configuration existing on production and missing on your um, shipping block. Uh, and we, 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 we said before that we had a problem, so if we keep the configuration on production, what about new fields, sorry, what about old fields that we want to delete? This tool takes care of it, so you can, instead of, instead of keeping everything that is in production and is not on my configuration, you can mention, ah, delete this three configuration because I don't need them anymore. For example, delete this field, delete this node type, or delete this block, because they shouldn't leave uh, on my environment anymore. Secondary, you actually balance. We said that Drush uh, CME by default um, um, is, is the equivalent of Drush uh, CME partial, so it will take care of new configuration existing on production and not coming from my uh, uh, import. It doesn't care of the one state of the initial or install uh, segment, so when you import, you can say in a different folder, you can so it's something even that is out of our audio um, sync directory. In a different folder, you say, oh, 10 minutes, come on. Uh, uh, if, uh, yeah, no, I think so. Uh, on your, on your, on your um, import, you can say, um, import this block, plus, try to see if production has this other configuration. If it does, it's fine. If it doesn't, this is for you. And then on exporting on an environment-based um, 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 segment, it does it, you, it, you can use the skip modules and you can enforce with ignore the list of configuration because skip modules by default on Drush, it's kind of, it's not buggy, it's, uh, it's, it's, it can lead to unexpected configuration depending on the module, um, it can lead to be saved to your syntax anyway. Uh, in this case, just see my tools takes care of this saying, um, be sure that this part that won't leave on my configuration anymore. Okay, it was a lot. It was a lot, and maybe it's, it's a new stuff. And, <laughs> and, 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 and uh, that's why that's why that was my face when I when I was writing the the, 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 the it was the, the the sketch, the draft of the presentation a while ago. But then I saw that CMI tools, and then I said, so it's not just me that we recognize that we have this segment from the configuration. So this is this is briefly the process. So we have a monolithic block. And then on our side, we recognize some segments, and we know that on our export or the import process, we don't have the environment related, we don't need environment related configuration. So this is the reconfiguration that we have to ship, which is the primary plus the one time, plus the initial configuration, right? So this is the one that we ship, but then we have to compare with the production one. The production has part of our primary, part of our initial, and then we have the secondary configuration, the new stuff that we are not aware of, we should take care of them, and in fact, would be a summary of our um, uh, configuration. On production, the primary will be deleted because we are the master. The initial will be deleted because we have D, so we will take care of it from, from the process. Uh, but we have to keep the secondary configuration. So our final configuration that will be imported is a merge of all these um, I don't know better than than sheet, but all, all the all the, all this all this 
this block, so all these segments. So this then will become our monolithic configuration that we can push because the monolithic bit is of what configuration management understands. We have to walk the middle part. This is a very cut. So uh, this table is really good. Uh, there's nothing to tell this table. So um, it's per how will you see all the tools? Here are all the segments that we recognize. There can be more. I just, I just find these three like really required. This is environment related. So we can have one more on none of this segment of configuration. And then in here, how we can use. This is good because if I'm a, a common guy, I love Drush, I have access to my server, I should use the CMI tools because it does everything for me. But if I'm not, if I'm a, a, a normal uh, business uh, manager dealing with, uh, a, I don't know, cats? I mean, I sell, I sell uh, uh, um, pet food, so I, I don't know anything about coding or, 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 or Drupal. I don't know about Drupal. I, I have this website. I know that I have my configuration. I can use a web UI tool to deal with my things. I can just use, for example, config no if I just have these three um, uh, segments on my configuration. Um, um, that's it, really. Um, I know that we have more time, probably have three minutes. It's say six. six. So I'm um, really love if you have any, any question, any doubts, or any clarification for me. This was an exercise coming from a real life. Um, someone mentioned to me, you, 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 don't, you don't give an example. We just got the ignore on our, um, uh, on our, um, on most of our website, mainly because we identified these three segments and we saw the config ignore does all of them. Uh, but yeah, and open to you now if you have any question. At all, or, or you want to throw me uh, something? <coughs> yes? Um, how are you dealing with custom content, like menu items which are content, or taxonomy terms that you need for structuring the site, or kind of custom block that has the address that needs to go into the site somewhere? How do you get that kind of configuration? Um, or content, in? content it shouldn't be a configuration. There was a huge discussion about if content should be should be and or must be. It should be part of your deployment or shouldn't be part of your deployment. Um, on my deployment, on my workflow, we leave, we leave content to a parent band base and we don't export the content. So the content lives on production, it lives on production. If we don't get the content, I pull the database or I export the content in some way. If you want to do it, uh, I think there is also a module content called content default, I guess. Or you can stage your content. Content demo. demo. I think it's yes yeah, default where you stage your content. But um, I think it's a it's a what I want to identify here is a common pattern. Starting or, or shipping the content is is more about probably a yes yeah, and again a pet based scenario a situation you can do it uh, with yeah with content default. Does he answer your question? Yeah, it's, it's just those, those bits of content that are actually most yeah, structural that you need for building the site. So you have to make sure that the UUID will stay the same. Oh, yeah, otherwise, yeah. yeah. Menu items is my, my main point that always come across. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Maybe content default is, is a solution, yeah. And you stage those important ones. Maybe there's any segment, like core content, core run, like to back core. Both of your websites. Structural yeah. Content, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. well, what if you want to um, change some of the configuration for a particular so like a contact form? Um, you want to change the fields in the contact form, but not the email address that the contact form goes to because the client controls that. How would you manage that? Um, that's a good question. Um, I don't have a. I don't have a global solution mm -hmm. uh, because this is not this is not possible at the moment with um, uh, with the configuration tools that we have um, yeah I, 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 I don't have an answer for you um, I never try I never try to I know that with, for example with config ignore you can ignore um, configuration by set. I don't know if you can go deep to the settings. I don't think you can at the moment because you go through the um, configuration names. I don't know if you can go deep to the settings. 
but I don't see how you, you should be able to do it. So going deep to the setting instead of limiting to the, the whole config uh, block. But at the moment, I don't think this is possible with any of the tools, I'm afraid. Okay. Yes? Ben, what do you do over the how we change things, let's say, uh, in news or here and there? You occasionally have the clashes in yeah. the conflict. Uh, how do you resolve this? Is there any best practice or automated way? Um, uh, look, this is a, this is a, it's a, it's a common question. Um, and it looks like there is a big set for adopting configuration uh, deployment with Drupal 8. But personally, I had the same problem with features in Drupal 7, so I don't see any difference really. Uh, what, I, what I can tell you is that now with Drupal 8, having everything compact, structured, and standardized in a configuration um, storage directory like the sync, it's much easier to avoid these kind of problems um, than it was with the feature on Drupal 8. Uh, in Drupal 7, um, the way I personally avoid it is um, there is no there is no global solution to this. The person I normally do it is I try to uh, create when it's a, a problem that uh, uh, when it's a, we work in a agile way, right? When I saw that a story is a possible um, case of conflicts, I create really small uh, branch features for each of the story. So I try to limit the change only to few lines, and then it should be possible. To me, this is, so far, is the only way. So creating micro changes instead of global changes. So hopefully, someone will change just, just even if it's on the same file, just one line of settings instead of all of it. 